So in Zoback's book, there's quite a few of these uh, sort of stress maps where a picture there, but there's this sort of stress maps where uh, the orientation of stress around you know, so essentially all these um, all these little lines represent the orientation of the principal stresses in some way, and you know, depending upon the color, there's some legend about how exactly they were found. A lot, many, many of them are from borehole, borehole observations, but certainly in these in Texas. Well, here is a bit of borehole well observation. A lot of the ones in California are inferred from earthquake focal mechanism data. <coughs> so Pore pressure at depth, if it's hydrostatic, we can just say that it's the density of water times D times the depth at Z. Times the gravity times the depth. So that's the hydrostatic pore pressure. Or, you know, it's, it's rare that the density of water would change significantly, but if you needed to, you could. If you had a good reason to, you could integrate the equation just the same as you do for rock. Here's uh, some of the terminology that you, you have already caught me saying before I defined it. But so hydrostatic is, I think you guys know what hydrostatic is, right? It's, 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 it's when the ratio of the pore pressure to S vertical would be 0.44, but just another way to say that is that it's just the, how, how the hydrostatic, how the pressure would increase if it's pure water. 0.44 psi per square foot. So if it's if it's pure water, then that, this increases 0.44 psi per square foot. The vertical stress increases at one psi per square foot as a rule of thumb, right? So therefore, the hydrostatic is approximately uh, 0.44. And this lambda is just the ratio, right? So it's just the ratio of the pore pressure to the vertical stress. It's approximately 0.44 for hydrostatic. And for lithostatic, it's one. Now, can we ever actually get to lithostatic? Can you actually achieve lithostatic pressure? No, and I just said that. Because you, you hydraulic and fracture the rock. So you can get close, you use that as an approximation, but you can never actually achieve it. So here's some actual data from the Monte Cristo field in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is pretty common for Gulf of Mexico uh, wells where you have an initial <laughs> increase at hydrostatic pressures, which is the blue line of drawn there. And then you have an overpressure region. So this is an area that's overpressurized, followed by and near lithostatic, right? So here, it's maybe hard to read, but that says lambda T, uh, 0 plus 9. So it goes from hydrostatic to near lithostatic, and the old pressurization region in between in a compartmentalized reservoir. So we'll talk more about the mechanisms for overpressure next time. And this is from a field in Egypt, and um, it's quite a, a deep well. It goes to uh, over 15,000 feet. But what you'll see is in these sort of white areas, which I'm going to color as red, that the pore pressures increase, and the, the different symbols. Uh, Different symbols come from different measurements. So for mud weight, uh, off tests, you know, RFP tests, loss circulation, and drilling. So the, the different symbols come from estimations of pore pressure from different measurements, and they're all fairly in agreement, right? 
But what you'll see is in the areas that, that I'm shading in red here, these are different compartmentalized areas that, for the, you know, as a good approximation, the pore pressures increase hydrostatically. And in the other, in the shaded region, so what you might think of this is like a very sort of highly connected region of high permeability surrounded by a compart, you know, something that isolates the reservoir. And so what, what would be like, uh, you know, if I wanted to label this as some rock or some geologic material, what would be, what would be a highly correct connected material? Right. Sand, right? So this may be, as, as a good, you know, as, a, as an example, this could be sand, and this could be shale. And so what you see is in the, in the shaded regions, there's a much you know, closer to lithostatic increase in compression. And so you know, your hydrostatic regions will be always occurring in very well-connected <coughs> reservoirs, sand, highly fractured reservoirs. You'll see hydrostatic and then you know, your impermeable reservoirs something close to the or impermeable regions. 